Back in 2006, Borat rocked my world, man. It was the funniest movie I'd ever seen in my life at the time, and I even dressed up as Borat for Halloween. <laughs> oh, that happened. Yakshimash, James here with another real review, and today we're taking a look at Borat 2, or actually Borat subsequent movie film. Or it's actually Borat's subsequent movie film, Delivery of Prodigious Bride to American Regime for Make Benefit One's Glorious Nation of Kazakhstan. Goodness gracious. It's directed by Jason Wolner and of course stars Sasha Baron Cohen as Borat once again and an actress that plays his daughter and I can't figure out the name of for the life of me because on IMDb that name takes me somewhere else and apparently no one knows her name. So if you do, please let me know in the comments below and also in the comments below, get loud and let me know if you're going to watch this movie this week and also if you haven't, guys, please go ahead and hit the big red button, subscribe to the channel and hey, join the family. I review movies early, I react to a ton of stuff, so it's just always a fun time over here on the channel and uh huh, this is gonna be one heck of a movie to talk about because i have to do it spoiler free there's a lot of things that we could talk about in terms of spoilers but we're not doing that because the review embargo won't let me so we're gonna talk about this movie spoiler free Borat's subsequent movie film is the follow-up to the 2006 hit comedy and Borat has unfortunately made Kazakhstan the laughing stock of the world so he's tasked with going to the United States of America and delivering a gift to Vice President Michael Pence. Now this movie is very familiar if you're a fan of Borat. The opening is a little familiar. The character, it's almost like Sasha Baron Cohen hasn't lost a beat. On an acting level though, I'm not going to lie, he's one of the best actors of my lifetime. And this performance was seriously no exception. He's hilarious in this movie. I was absolutely floored by some of the gags that they pulled off, and that's where we're going to start, guys. There are some things in Borat's subsequent movie film that I never thought could ever happen in cinema. But it was effective because it was the hardest I've laughed in a movie all year. There were so many moments where I literally had to pause, then play, and pause again, you know, when you get into those laughing fits. That happens very often here, and honestly, it made me kind of want to watch this with an audience. I miss that. Again, if you're a fan of Borat, you're going to love this movie and the lengths that it goes to make you laugh. Borat and his daughter, Tutar, they're so good together. They're hilarious, and this movie is better because of it. There are some moments that involve both of them that just made my jaw hit the ground. Again, I can't spoil anything or talk specifics, but what I will say is that it involves some rallies that they attend <laughs> and some figures in America. <laughs> This movie really does aim to shock you in every way possible, and it really achieves that. It makes you feel uncomfortable sometimes, it makes you laugh, it makes you scratch your head, and then it gets you angry, especially if you're an American. It makes you freaking angry. But that's the intention behind the film. It just is delivering a great deal of political and social commentary, and man, Sasha Baron Cohen and his team of writers on this film just did such an excellent job. There are also a lot of jokes aimed at Trump and his supporters, so uh... I'm here for it. Now let's circle back to Sasha Baron Cohen and the actress who plays his daughter, again that I can't find the name of. How both of them are able to hold their composure alongside one another and in their individual scenes is beyond me. There's even a sincere moment between Tutar and a babysitter that really made the film feel a little bit more whole, and I won't get into specifics again, but what I will say is that I like that they shine the spotlight a little bit more on Tutar, and it wasn't just Borat, 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 because in the first movie, that's pretty much all we got. Every scene practically involved him, but I do like that the movie kind of carries weight with the actress that does play his daughter in this movie. Now, I know I'm raving about this movie, guys, but there are some things that didn't work too well in this sequel, and we start with the callbacks. That was expected. I knew that they were going to do the very nice, and they were going to do the half five a lot, and I get it. That's Borat. That's the character. But in the beginning of the film, especially in the first 10-15 minutes, I was almost worried that maybe they were doing that too much or they were trending in that direction. Luckily, they didn't, but they were going down a checklist of, okay, talk about gypsy tears, talk about high five and very nice, and maybe make some jokes about other groups of people. And it, it felt like they were going through the motions a little bit, and luckily they got it all out of their system and some fresh jokes and hilarious moments followed. Now there are some moments towards the middle of the film where the movie dragged. I don't necessarily remember the first Borat movie dragging all too often, but here in Borat's subsequent movie film, it kind of felt like the story elements to this movie were not as strong. The thing is, I get it, it's needed, you need to have a sort of plot to this movie or it's going to run out of steam in the first, what, hour because you're throwing all the jokes out and it's not going to have any sort of pacing. So I understand the need for Borat and Tutar to have their story together, but sometimes it did feel like it dragged and it didn't necessarily add to the comedic value of the movie. 
So overall, you guys, Borat's subsequent movie film is really the comedy I needed this year. It provided me laughs I desperately needed as well because 2020 has been a crazy year, guys. So amidst all the chaos, this was a movie that was definitely needed and I almost had an asthma attack. I was laughing so hard I was wheezing. I'm not kidding. But of course, the biggest question a lot of fans will have is, does Borat's subsequent movie film live up to the hype of the first film? I'd say it isn't as great as the first movie, but that's because Borat kind of set a different standard for comedy it shocked us like no other movie has before and what it did was really shake up the world i mean it was a cultural phenomenon still there's enough here for those who are familiar with borat to love and even enough for those who have never seen borat which is really cool so if you're seeing borat for the first time with the sequel it might even motivate you to go back and watch the first which you should it's recommended. There's not much wrong with this movie, and where it does come up short, again, I think it's made up for with these huge, epic, comedic moments. They're freaking funny. So if you have to ask me, guys, yes, you need to watch Borat's subsequent movie film. It's one of the best comedies I've seen in a very long time. It's effective, it's charming sometimes, and also it's hilarious, all right? It just works. All the jokes work really, really well. So yes, make time for it, because yeah, the whole world's gonna talk about Borat once again. Alrighty guys, well there you have it. That's my real review of Borat's subsequent movie film. I love this movie and I want to know if you do too. So go ahead and get loud in the comments below and let me know what you think of the film when you see it this weekend on Amazon Prime Video. And if you haven't already, go ahead and smash that red button and subscribe to the channel. Tap on the bell so you stay up to date with anything new. We're almost at 3,000 subscribers and it's all because of you guys. I forgot how to say thank you like Borat. I'll have to work on that. Alrighty y'all, again thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you at the next screening.